Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on factoring a trinomial that is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So today, this lesson is gonna focus when a, the leading coefficient, has a value of something other than one. So my previous video in the playlist is factoring when a is one when the leading coefficient is one. So if you haven't learned to factor with uh, one as your leading coefficient, then I would take a look at that video before this one. So again, our objective today is to factor a trinomial, which is also a polynomial in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So what I really want you focused on today is how can you factor a trinomial with a leading coefficient that is not one? So there are six steps that will lead you through factoring any trinomial, even if it actually had a leading coefficient of one, and they're, they're just a fail safe. So they're an absolute um, way to organize your thoughts and to make sure that you don't forget anything as you're going through. So I'm gonna walk you through these and I'm gonna model how to use them, it's explain what they all are, and that I believe that when students start off looking at this and using this as a procedural checklist, did I do this and do it in order, it just becomes habit. So really these six steps are how to learn to factor, but also building good habits so that you don't forget any of the details. So here we go. Step one, if necessary, you factor out the GCF. Noting that this is not always necessary and students often forget to begin every factoring problem thinking about this first, and then they get to their factors, at their binomial factors, and they're not completely factored. So there is something that you will see in the instructions, it says factor completely. If you keep this first step at the forefront of your mind and learn it now, you will never ever fail at that. All right, and then step two, you wanna find the product of A times C. Step, oh, step three, you wanna determine what factors of the product from step two have a sum equal to B. Step four, we're gonna rewrite that middle term in the trinomial, that BX term, to be the sum using factors from step three. And then in step five, we're gonna factor out the greatest common factor from the first two terms and factor the greatest common factor from the last two terms. And then six is where the magic happens. We're gonna write the product of two binomials using the distributive property. One binomial is the sum of each of the greatest common factors, and the second is the common binomial term, which works out just like magic every single time. All right, so I'm sure you're thinking, whoa, that's a lot. So here we go. Here's an example for you. I'm gonna factor 2x squared plus 11x plus five using these six steps. So step one, it's not necessary. 2x squared, 11x, and 5 do not have any factor in common. Step 2, I'm going to find the product of a and c. So a is 2, c is positive 5. you got to keep track of the signs of these terms too. So 2 times 5 is 10. Now in step 3, I need to determine what factors of 10, when added, have a sum that is equal to b. So what factors of 10 have a sum of 11? So factors one and 10, when multiplied, one times 10 is 10, one plus 10 is 11, so it works. So again, um, we're going to now go to step four, and we're gonna rewrite that BX term. That BX term right here is positive 11X. So you can see the magic here is one plus 10. I'm gonna change that to one X plus 10X. Now this expression is equivalent to the trinomial that you were given to factor. If I combine these like terms, it's equivalent. So I have not changed the value of the expression. Step five, now we wanna consider the first two terms and we wanna factor out the greatest common factor. So when I do that, the greatest common factor between two x squared and one x is x. Then to make it so that it equals 2x squared plus 1x, we know that x times 2x is 2x squared, x times 1 is 1x. So you should have learned how to factor, and now we have 10x plus 5. The greatest common factor between the two terms is 5, and then 5 times 2x is 10x, and then 5 times 1 is 5. 
So here's the magic. Notice that these binomials are the same. So we take our greatest common factor from each, and that's one binomial, and then our binomial, our second binomial term, and this is our factor trinomial. X plus five multiplied by two X plus one. So now it's your turn. I've given you the six steps to solving, to factoring, and here is the trinomial I would like you to factor. So please pause the video, try to factor this using these six steps, come back and hit play when you're ready to see the solution. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So step one in this particular problem is not necessary. 3x squared, 7x and two, those three terms do not have any factor in common. So I'm gonna find the product in step two, three times two is six, and now I'm gonna determine what factors of six when added, have a sum that's equal to b, okay? So I'm looking at um, six and what factors, when added, when multiplied will equal six, and when added are going to equal seven, okay? So here we go. One times six is six, and one plus six is seven. So now I'm going to rewrite those terms to make the sum of bx. I'm gonna split this into two terms using this. So three x squared plus one x plus six x plus two. And once again, I have not changed the value of this expression because when I combine these like terms, it's equivalent to the given trinomial. So now we're gonna factor out the greatest common factor from the first two terms, three x squared plus x. X is the greatest common factor multiplied by 3x plus 1. The second two terms have a greatest common factor of 2 multiplied by 3x plus 1. Once again, there's your magic. So our first binomial is the greatest common factor from each, x plus 2, and then our 3x plus 1, which is their common factor. So factored, x plus 2 multiplied by 3x plus 1. So here we go. Here's one that has a step one. These, this trinomial, the three terms, all have a greatest common factor in common. Their greatest common factor is two. So when you have step one and there's a greatest common factor, you need to factor it out. Here's the beauty in this. Now that I've factored this out, we have the trinomial that hopefully you've learned first to factor. And this is what I've shown in my previous videos, how to factor this. So we now just want to know factors of 2 and 8 because a times c, 1 times 16, is just 16. So what factors of 16, when multiplied, give you 16, and when added, give you 10? So 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 plus 8 is 10. And we don't need to do the splitting into four terms here because this is a trinomial with a leading coefficient of one. So it just works out that we have two multiplied by x plus two multiplied by x plus eight. So the, the trick here is to keep your greatest common factor out. All right, your turn. Go ahead and use our six steps. Be sure you check for a greatest common factor. Pause, come back when you're ready to check your solution. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So our solution is all of these terms have a common factor of three. When I factor that out, I get three times three x squared plus 22 x plus seven. Now my leading coefficient here is not one, it's three. So I have to go back to my list and I'm gonna do a times c, which is three times seven, which is 21. And what factors of 21 when multiplied give me 21 and when added give me 22 and that's easy. That's one and 21. One plus 21 is 22. So here we go. There is splitting 22x into these two terms. One x plus 21x gives you 22x. And remember, I'm keeping that greatest common factor right here. So now I need to factor, I gotta keep this greatest common factor three here, but then inside I need to factor, find the greatest common factor of the first two terms, which is x times three x plus one. And then I have seven times three x plus one. Over here, these, those last two terms have a greatest common factor of seven. 
So we have x plus 7 times 3x plus 1. And don't forget to write your 3 here. We need that 3 as our final answer. 3 times x plus 7 times 3x plus 1. All right, here's another one for you. Now, I'm going to ask you to pause and keeping in mind that we have this negative here. I'm going to point that out to you and see if you can do that one on your own. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So there's no greatest common factor between these three terms. So I'm going to multiply a times c. And remember, c here is negative 1. So this is where it gets tricky. So my product is negative 3. But my sum needs to give me a positive 2. So it matters which one of my factors is negative. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 add 3 is 2. So I'm ready. Negative 1x plus 3x. I'm going to find the greatest common factor of the first two terms and the greatest common factor of the second two terms. So the greatest common factor of the first two is x. And then that gives me a binomial of 3x minus 1. And sometimes when we go to find the greatest common factor, the only factor they have in common is 1. And here's my magic, 3x minus 1. So I have x plus 1 multiplied by my 3x minus 1. So this one showed you a couple of things to keep track of your negative sign, but also realizing that sometimes our greatest common factor is 1. All right. Now I've given you a trinomial where the b term, the b value, is negative. Go ahead and pause and see what you can do. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I have no greatest common factor between 7, negative 9, and 2. a times c, 7 times 2 is 14. The factors of 14 now need to equal negative 9. So in order for them to have a sum that's negative, they both have to be negative. When I multiply two values that are negative, I'll get a positive product. And when I add them, I get a negative sum. So negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14. Negative 2 plus negative 7 is negative 9. So here's my terms. Negative 2x subtract 7x is equivalent to negative 9x. And now I'm going to find the greatest common factor of my first two terms and my greatest common factor of my second two terms. This gets tricky with our negative sign. We've got to be very careful to the details. So 7x squared and negative 2x have an x in common. When I factor that out, I get 7x minus 2. Over here, we always want to factor out. If there's a negative sign here, you always want to use that. So I'm going to factor out negative 1. And here's the magic, 7x minus 2. Remember, this magic needs to happen. These binomials need to be identical, or it didn't work. So my greatest common factors are x minus 1, and my binomial I have in common is 7x minus 2. So factored is x minus 1 multiplied by 7x minus 2. All right, try this one. It gives you another shot at this negative sign. Go ahead and pause. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. There again, there's no greatest common factor. But a times c, 4 times 7 is 28. And I want to know what factors, when multiplied, give me positive 28. And when added, give me negative 11. Now I split that into two terms. Negative 11x is equivalent to negative 4x minus 7x. My going to factor my first two terms and factor my second two terms. So the greatest common factor of the first two terms is 4x multiplied by x minus 1. The greatest common factor here, remember we're going to use this negative sign, is negative 7. And when I factor that out, I get x minus 1, and here's your magic. So using my greatest common factors is my first binomial. And then the factor they have in common is the binomial x minus 1. So completely factored is 4x minus 7 multiplied by x minus 1. All right, now I have one where both are negative. Let's see if you can do this one on your own. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. 
Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So once again, there's no greatest common factor. You can see that I'm trying to show you all the ways to do this with um, positive and negative terms. A times C, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. The factors 1 and negative 5 have a sum of negative 4. Splitting 1x, subtract 5x, is equivalent to negative 4x. Okay, now the greatest common factor of the first two terms, they both have an x in common, times 5x plus 1. Here, these terms both have a negative 1 in common, times 5x plus 1. Remember, this binomial term needs to be the same. So the first binomial is my greatest common factors, x minus 1, and my second is their greatest common factor, their common factor, not their greatest, sorry, their common factor, 5x plus 1. So completely factored is x minus 1 multiplied by 5x plus 1. And that's how we factor a trinomial in ax squared plus bx plus c form. I hope you enjoyed the lesson today, and you'll subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And I hope you have a great day.